I think it's fair to say that the Greek deities are fairly renowned for their punishments of mortals and gods alike, and so today we'll be taking a look at the punishments of Tantalus and Sisyphus. Tantalus was the son of Zeus and the nymph Pluto, but being a son of Zeus certainly doesn't make you immune to punishment, especially when you anger the gods as many times as he did. As a son of Zeus, and in some cases a respected king, he was regularly invited to feasts of the gods on Mount Olympus, but to say that he was less than a gracious guest is quite the understatement. He would often get extremely drunk and steal the gods nectar and ambrosia, the two drinks that were considered sacred. He then took these back and gave them to the people of his kingdom to make them immortal, and if that wasn't enough, he then further divulged some of the gods' divine secrets that he had learnt whilst on Olympus. Tantalus then decided to kill Pelops, the future king of the Peloponnese, who also happened to be his son. But then, just like the story of King Lycoon, he chopped his son into pieces and served him to the gods in a stew. Now we know from King Lycoon's story that human sacrifice was considered a big taboo amongst the Greek deities, and the only deity to eat the stew was Demeter, who at the time was far more concerned about her missing daughter. The Morai, who were also known as the Three Fates, then collected the boy's remaining body parts and gave them to Zeus, ordering him to bring the boy back to life because he was destined to do great things. The boy would then be put back together, and his missing shoulder that was consumed by Demeter was replaced with one made of ivory, constructed by Hephaestus. As punishment for his actions, Tantalus was placed in a pool of water, beneath a fruit tree. But whenever Tantalus reached for the fruit, the branches would raise themselves just enough so he could never fulfil his hunger. Whenever Tantalus wished to quench his thirst, he merely had to stoop down and drink from the water that he stood in. But every time that he did bend over to get a drink, the water would then recede, leaving him forever thirsty and forever hungry. There was also an enormous boulder placed just above his head, leaving Tantalus constantly paranoid that it could fall at any moment and crush him. This punishment was seen as an example of temptation without any satisfaction, which is where we get the word tantalized from, which of course refers to the temptation or the promise of something that is unattainable. In a slightly different version of this story, Tantalus was given the same punishment, but this time it was for stealing a dog made of gold created by Hephaestus. Now in some accounts it was Tantalus's friend Pandarus who actually stole the dog and gave it to him for safekeeping, and in others the roles were reversed. Regardless of who exactly stole the golden dog, it would be Tantalus who would have to face the punishment. The next punishment is that of King Sisyphus, who was sentenced to an eternity in Tartarus after revealing the secrets of Zeus. Zeus in his anger then ordered Thanatos to personally escort the king to Tartarus, and when Thanatos eventually arrived, he brought with him a set of enchanted chains. King Sisyphus, desperate to avoid his punishment, then asked Thanatos if he could see how these chains worked, and seeing how he was condemned to an eternity in Tartarus, Thanatos granted his request. But Sisyphus then took the opportunity to trick Thanatos and instead bind him in his own chains, and then flee. With Thanatos now bound and unable to perform his duties, no one on earth could die, which caused quite a few issues, especially with the god Ares, who could no longer enjoy the thrill of war, as none of his enemies would die. Ares would eventually intervene, freeing Thanatos and bringing back King Sisyphus. Even when Sisyphus finally entered the underworld, it seemed like he already had an escape plan set in motion. Before dying, he ordered his wife to prove her love by throwing his naked body in the public square. When he arrived in the underworld, he convinced Persephone that what his wife had done was a grave sign of disrespect, and so after some persuasion, she allowed him to return to the land of the living to give his body a proper burial. Of course, once back in his kingdom, he had no intention of ever returning to the land of the dead and it would take Hermes physically dragging him back to the underworld for him to finally face his punishment. Because of his trickery and his inability to accept his initial punishment, Sisyphus was made to roll a huge boulder up what seemed like a steep hill that would never end. As punishment for thinking he could outsmart Zeus and the other deities, Zeus enchanted the boulder so it would roll away from Sisyphus just before he reached the very top making it so the king was sentenced to an eternity of useless efforts and unending frustration. This would then lead to the term Sisyphean, 
which referred to activities that were either endless or completely pointless. There are many examples of mortals or gods being punished within Greek mythology, but these two stories are often linked because they both featured kings who thought they could outsmart the gods by sharing their secrets. Their punishments both also involved a giant boulder, and their stories and names would be the source for words in the English language that we still use today. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever heard of any of these punishments, or which one you think was worse. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained, reminding you the importance of keeping a secret, unless you want a giant boulder dropped on your head.